was certainly frightening when I got hit. I thought, this is really stupid. I shouldn't be here. But you're right. Boris! Boris! I'm Boris, or Boris, and I am a volcanologist working on Mount Etna and other Italian volcanoes. Etna is certainly one of the most active volcanoes on Earth, so Etna erupts virtually all the time. These paroxysms are characterized by the, 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 the formation of huge lava fountains, many hundreds of meters, sometimes more than 1,000, 1,500 meters high. This eruption emitted approximately 100 million cubic meters of magma. What might have become a possibly threatening and destructive flank eruption became an extremely spectacular summit eruption. What was maybe a bit more outstanding this year was the, the sheer quantity, the sheer size of these parks, and they were all big. All active volcanoes are potentially dangerous. There is no safe volcano. So volcanoes, active volcanoes are not safe. And sometimes um, potentially hazardous and dangerous events can take place also in conditions where you usually would not expect them. There was this um, steam explosion in 2017, which uh, involved uh, a lot of people, including a BBC crew and uh, yours truly. was certainly frightening. Given the quantity of rock projectiles that came down, was how, how are we going to get out of this? When I got hit, I thought, okay, here we go. And thought, this is, this is really stupid. I shouldn't be here. But you're right. The main problem at Etna has been the fallout of what we call pyroclastic material. Pyroclastic material is fragments of volcanic rock created by uh, explosive activity that rips the magma when it comes to the surface into fragments. When this material falls over inhabited areas, it covers everything. Sometimes pretty gloomy scenes. You, you, you drive into that sector that has been stricken by the fallout maybe one hour before and everything is black. It becomes a continuous carpet. And um, what happens is when this material lies on roads, the roads become slippery almost as though this were snow. There have been deadly accidents. Uh, one thing that they do here, unfortunately, is they use these, these blowers. So they... <laughs> They're blowing this material from one place to another just to remove it from a sidewalk, maybe, and they create an enormous, enormous quantity of dust, including the, the well-known PM10 fraction, which is uh, respirable and which can even get into your blood. And that's where problems can become more urgent. So people obviously already suffering from respiratory problems will uh, have more trouble with that. And there is also some Suspicion that long-term exposure to these very, very fine uh, dust particles can lead to uh, pathologies like cancer, thyroid cancer, and so on. So this is, these are all reasons why we definitely need a system to treat this material. They have never planned for this. There is no plan for this. And you can understand that these people get really desperate. They get really, really, really sick of it. Well, we, we do keep our volcanoes under surveillance. We have 
uh, seismographs. We can measure how volcanoes swell. We use GPS for that. We use satellite radar, strain meters, a microphone to, re to record infrasound signals. We measure gas emissions. We measure magnetism and gravity. We have video cameras. We have thermal cameras. We use radar. So what, what, whatever can be used to capture volcanic signals is being used. And yet, it can only record the signals that the volcano is ready to give us. People ask us, with all the instruments that we have, that you have, with all those instruments, with all the money that you get, you're not capable of telling us what the volcano is gonna do in the next 15 years? We can tell only things about what the volcano is gonna do once the volcano tells us. It will certainly happen, it will certainly be the next serious and potentially very destructive eruption of Etna. There's no way around it, it's inevitable. There's this old Japanese saying that uh, in the moment that everybody will have forgotten the last disaster, the next one will strike. People cannot imagine what can happen. We do not know very precisely what process creates the magma that feeds Etna. It's, it's, it's very, very fascinating. It's, it's sometimes a bit confusing and there's still a lot of mystery to it. Yeah, so how can we deal with future volcanic crises, future volcanic events? Certainly, we cannot prevent them. Certainly, the volcano is teaching us important lessons and we uh, need to pass them on to the people to tell them, we need to tell them the mantra of international disaster mitigation and prevention, which is uh, awareness and preparedness. There's a lot of work to be done there, and we do it especially with the young people, uh, because um, they might be the ones that will change things.